This right here is one of the best value graphics cards you can currently buy on the used market. And I bet you want to know what it is. Okay, okay, I'll tell you. Jeez, relax. It's the RX 5700 XT, okay? And that's probably not a surprise to some of you. Uh, for some reason, I think there are a few reasons. I don't know if they're all justified or not, but AMD cards tend to depreciate a bit faster than their NVIDIA counterparts. And that just means more value for us budget gamers. Now, I've had this PowerColor RX 5700 XT for several years now. In fact, we made a video on this card. And at the time, uh, it was a fair price, I think. It, it wasn't anything super crazy, but now, oh my gosh, you can find these dirt cheap. And that's what I wanna talk about in this video, the value proposition behind a card like this and some things to look out for as well, especially if you're buying used. Are you ready? Stay with me. Cometeer is the ultimate flash frozen coffee solution, offering delicious flavors with minimal prep time. They'll ship to your door each month without hassle and customize boxes based on your roast preference. And from there, you can choose a variety of ways to serve each capsule. Feeling an iced coffee one day? Simply melt a capsule in hot water and pour into your favorite icy glass. You can also drop a frozen capsule into a glass of warm water for an excellent hot coffee appeal. There's a ton of versatility with Cometeer and best of all, you aren't compromising on flavor. To get started, simply click the link below and choose between various roasted mixes. You can even specify your favorite roaster if you prefer. Then select your delivery frequency. And it's that simple. Create your favorite coffees easily with no mess and no stress. And for a limited time, you can save $20 off your first two orders. That's 40 bucks in total by using code Greg Salazar via the link in this video's description. You know what's really sad about cards like these? About a year or so after launch, people just forget about them. I'm not sure what it is, maybe just the desire to have the latest and greatest tech out there. Um, people just toss these to the side, and when they're shopping for a new or used card, just something to throw into a rig that can handle games well, they tend to forget these gems here. This card wasn't the most fantastic and all be all greatest value card ever when it launched, but it certainly has that title going for it today. And we're gonna talk about why in this video. This card utilizes the original RDNA architecture and the GPU in particular is packed full of 10.3-ish billion transistors. Still a heck of a card in 2023. This Red Devil SKU in particular utilizes two supplemental PCIe 8 pins and has a TDP of around 225 to 250 watts. The recommended power supply minimum wattage is about 600. These also have eight gigs of GDDR6 memory and I think that's fine, especially given the price you're expected to pay today. Speaking of, what is that price? Well, how does 150 USD sound? These are sold listings, and some of these are, are very current, actually. You can find ASRock boards, you can find uh, some from XFX, some from PowerColor, like ours, and you can see most of these are selling for anywhere between 125 and 175 US. That is so cheap. I think back in October 2022, the last time we checked all of these graphics card prices, uh, they were selling for around 200 to 250 bucks. And even then, at those prices, they were still pretty competitive deals. Uh, but now, I mean, just taking into account the performance that you're getting in a card like this, I think these are absolute steals. There are so many of these cards still being sold as of time of filming on eBay. I'm gonna have a link down below if you wanna check any of them out. Uh, but I think one of the reasons why the card is so cheap is because there is just a sheer supply issue from a seller's perspective. They have to compete with each other to such an extent that um, well, it's driven the value of these through the roof. Uh, the only thing you'll probably want to mind is the potential mining risk with a card like this. These were quite popular two or three years ago amongst miners and so as a result what you'll probably want to do is search for maybe a single seller of a single card and maybe you can look through other things they've sold in the past if it looks like they've sold tons of similar cards maybe they were mined with but if it's just a single graphics card I don't really think you have too much to worry about and these aren't super old to the point where you need to worry that much about them kicking the can in the next few months. Now that goes without saying, buying used definitely has its risks and that's one of the reasons why I recommend buying from a site like eBay with the buyer protection guarantee in place. Buying used in person can be risky, especially if you can't verify that the product works with your own eyeballs. Now before we get to some gaming benchmarks, I wanna show you this raw chart around 3D Mark times by graphics scores for several of these SKUs that have probably 
probably been on your radar at some point in the last year or so. Uh, the ESP denotion here stands for eBay sale price, and this is what you should expect to pay for one of these cards used on eBay today. And we calculate value for each of these SKUs by dividing the score from 3 d Mark's database by the ESP. So essentially this is performance per dollar, and we've conditionally formatted to show you some of the best and worst values on this chart. The best by far, as you can see, the reason why this video exists is the RX 5700 XT. Now there are many other graphics cards that we have accounted for over the past two years that I did not include here because I didn't want to clutter you with just tons of data that really doesn't matter because a lot of those cards aren't in the same performance category as this one. Uh, I did include, say, the RX 570, I think that's in here, yep, and the GTX 1660 Ti, uh, just some, some cards that maybe aren't as powerful, but that maybe still have crossed your, uh, crossed your mind from time to time. And you can see some of those are still actually decent values. The RX 570 has always been a tried and true card, although many of those have been plagued with mining in the past. If you can find these for around 50 to 75 bucks, they are pretty sweet deals, but they are a lot weaker cards, as you can see on the scores. Uh, the 50 7700 and the XT are both well above 50 on our value chart, and that puts them in a totally separate category from pretty much everything else on here, with the exception of the 5600 XT, which is also an AMD card from the same GPU generation. Something else you might have noticed in this chart, the fact that there are newer SKUs listed here that are worse values than the 5700 and XT models. And this wasn't always the case. Take, for example, the RTX 3080. Back in October 2022, these were selling all day for 500 USD and below, and at the time we thought they were pretty sweet deals. Folks were offloading these because they were expecting NVIDIA to announce something even better. And similar to how folks behaved with Turing when Ampere was announced, I mean, right at the very keynote, right at the announcement of the 3080, folks were dumping their RTX 2080s and 2080 Ti's for $400 and below. At the time, those were insane deals, and most of those folks got screwed over because they either could get an allocation, or if they could, it was from somebody on eBay who was charging two or three times MSRP for them. I think a lot of folks learned their lesson because we didn't see the same sell-off here with Ampere, uh, but that definitely played a part in kind of maximizing the value for us back then. The problem today is that these cards are actually more expensive than they were in October, even after Ada Lovelace and RDNA 3 were announced and launched. That's a big problem, but I think it speaks to the consumer sentiment around those generations. Folks don't see Ada Lovelace and RDNA 3 as stellar values, not like they did Ampere. And so you have a lot of them turning to the last gen stuff. Cards like this, however, are two generations old. A lot of these cards will last five or six years. With maintenance, if you keep them clean, you don't run them in very hot, humid environments, they will probably last you several years. And by now, we would know if there were really big issues with RX 5700 XTs and 5700s and even 5600 XTs. Depending on your budget, any of those cards can make a lot of sense for a thousand dollar PC build or below. And again, as long as you do your due diligence, I don't see any reason why you shouldn't at least consider a used card. Now, there are some folks who out of principle will straight up avoid used altogether, and that's fine. That's just what you want to do. It's your money. I can't tell you how to spend it, but I've put my money where my mouth is time and time again, and as long as you're buying from something reputable or you're buying with, again, something like the eBay buyer protection guarantee uh, behind you, you really don't have much to worry about, other than maybe losing a bit of time if you do happen to get a defective card out of the box. A card like the RX 5700 XT is uh, you know, a 1080p, 1440p gamer. Yes, you could stretch it to 4K, but you're going to compromise a lot of in-game settings, especially in modern titles. And so what I'm going to do is focus on the 1440p resolution, which is a nice middle ground, I think, especially given how much you're spending for this card at this point. And I'm going to adjust in-game settings so that I can achieve on average 120 FPS. And you can see that we were able to leave some in-game settings on medium, some on high, heck, some on very high, even a, a little bit of anti-aliasing depending on the title. That's pretty darn good, and it shows you just how far you can stretch a card like this in 2023. Racing games in particular fare very well here. You could run F1 2022 all day with an RX 5700 XT. No problems at all, even when you include things like dynamic weather. Uh, the card was able to keep things well above 100 FPS. GTA 5, another game that, uh, well, is quite old by this point, but it can look very nice when you start bumping in-game settings. Runs super, super easily on a 5700 XT. Uh, you got Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This was actually an NVIDIA-touted title. Uh, 
there are ways to really crush a card like the 5700 XT in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, especially if you want to turn on like ray tracing, which this card clearly doesn't support. Uh, but you can still get the right mix of in-game settings here and have a fluid experience. So it's not just AMD titles or racing titles. You can even spin some NVIDIA titles toward this card and it can handle them as long as you're willing to make some in-game concessions. Just make sure you have a power supply that's beefy enough to handle a card like this and mind the case that you pair with a card like this. If you're buying a Red Devil variant, for example, uh, this is a larger footprint than a lot of the 5700 XTs you could buy on eBay. So make sure that your case is long enough to fit something this large. I still can't wrap my head around the fact that cards like these are going for under $200 now. It, it, it's just insane. And one man's trash, definitely in this case, is another man's treasure. I hope this video shed a bit of light into the potential value for older generation models out there. I know there's this huge concern right now among most consumers about mining and how anything that's mined should just be avoided at all costs. Firstly, I don't think mining is the worst case scenario for a graphics card. There are clearly worse things you could be doing with your cards. If they are mined with reasonably and they are kept in controlled environments, it's, it's not the end of the world. That said, you shouldn't be paying MSRP or even close to that for a mined with card. If you're able to avoid the mining argument altogether, maybe by buying from a single seller with a single card, they don't have any history of selling multiple cards or what have you. To me, again, it's a no brainer. If you're looking to build a system under $1,000 and you haven't at least considered the used market, I think you are doing yourself a disservice. That's just my opinion. I know some folks are gonna disagree with that heavily. You can do so in the comments, all caps it, whatever you need to do. The fact is, I think you owe it to yourself and to your wallet to at least look, give it a chance, see what's out there. It's not like you don't have protections in place and cards like these for under $200 to just, it, it's in a different realm of value than what you could buy anywhere on the new market. Just insane value here. So just consider it. That's all I'm asking. If you enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up. That would be greatly appreciated. Consider subscribing down below. Check out relevant links in the video description, and I will catch you in the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.